Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Not at my door today, but I'm just a little ways from my house and I'm on the side of the New River in Southwest Virginia. The New River flows from North Carolina, north up through Virginia, into the Kanawha, into the Ohio River, and eventually in the Mississippi. Why am I here today? I'm here to find Helgramites. Last year, I did a episode on Dobson fly adults, and you have to see them. They're giant insects. They look like prehistoric organisms. The males have giant tusks. The females have biting jaws. <laughs> it's a really fascinating insect to see. So the larva of this or organism, of the Dobson fly, is locally called the Helgramite. And the Helgramites live in the water for up to three years, and I'll explain their life history. So stay tuned, and let me tell you the life history of the Helgramite, which will be then become the adult Dobson fly. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's to make this basic. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's You can go on YouTube and folks will show you a lot of different ways to catch Helgramites. And the reason they do it is because they're bass fishermen and they want Helgramites for bait. I don't use Helgramites for bait, but I'm gonna show you today how I catch them using a biology style insect net called a D frame net because it has the shape of a D. Basically, you take this net and you put the bottom down at your feet and kick the rocks in front of the net. The in aquatic insects that are hanging out on the rock in the current, sticking on the rock in the cracks and crevices or underneath will be swept into the net when I disturb them with my feet. So take a look at how I do this. So this is ideal habitat for Dobson fly larva we call Helgramites, and lots of other aquatic insects. There's lots of rocks here, lots of cracks and crevices to hide in. The current brings both food and oxygen to aquatic insects. And this is just a really, really high productivity place in a stream or river with lots of different kinds of aquatic invertebrates living in and amongst these rocks, taking advantage again of that current that'll bring them food and oxygen. So I'm gonna walk out here to where the current's moving very fast. This is kind of slow and muddy. And over here, the water's moving very quickly. The rocks are clean. I can see the colors on the rocks. And I'm going to use my feet to rub the substrate in front of that net. Anything that's on the rocks in front of that net will be swept into the net. So I'll move the net over and I'll do a kick sample on another square foot. I'll move the net over one more time. I'll do another kick sample and I rub about approximately a square foot and I work my toes down in rocks and I pull the net up and I look to see what I got. Well, I got lucky and after a couple tries here I was able to find this Helgramite larva and there he is clinging to the net which is what they like to do when they're in the water. Now he's looking for a way to escape. You can see he's got six legs, some big jaws, and a puffy abdomen. So how do you identify a Helgramite larva? Like all insects, it has three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And it's got six legs that are attached to the armored thorax. And it has a distinctly black head with very large jaws and some sensory palps in the front. His abdomen is three or four or five times as long as his thorax 
and has long filaments extending from the sides. People often mistake those filaments for legs. In between the filaments are gill tufts. There's another aquatic insect larva that looks like the helgramite and it's called a fish fly. And the fish fly looks very, very similar, but the distinguishing characteristic is when you turn over the fish fly, you will not see any gill tufts in between those filaments. Otherwise, they really do look very similar. So I'd like to tell you a few things about the life history of these unusual organisms. They're found across much of North America, also Europe and Asia. I've heard even parts of Africa and New Zealand as a particular species. The adult female Dobson fly will lay a patch of eggs, maybe 500 to 1,000, in a single place on a leaf or a branch or on large rocks or bridge abutments overhanging the water. Eggs will hatch out in a week or so. The hatchlings will fall directly into the water. Well, they will live as a larva for sometimes up to three years. During this aquatic life stage, they exist as predators, eating other invertebrates smaller than themselves. And by the time they're about this size, they are the stream's top invertebrate predator. They'll go through about 10 molts during that lifetime of one to three years. After the final molt, in the spring, sometime May, sometimes May, sometimes June, depending on your latitude and longitude, they'll migrate out of the water. They'll come up out of the water. Sometimes they say that it's triggered by an afternoon thunderstorm and they'll walk up to 15 meters across the ground and looking for a place to dig a hole under a rock, in some leaf litter, under a board, or under a rotting log. They'll make a chamber and they'll pupate there. And in about two to three weeks, they'll emerge from the pupa as the winged adults. The males have large tusks for jaws and actually they're more for show they can't really pinch with this. The female retains the same jaws that they had when female was a larva, and a female adult can pinch. Males only live three to five days, and the female adults only live about eight to 10 days. They don't even bother to feed. They have a single purpose, and that's to mate and lay eggs. One of the challenges for all stream organisms is to get enough oxygen from the water. And the concentration of oxygen in water is relatively low. In fact, it's so low, it's measured in parts per million. Well oxygenated water might have as much as 10 parts per million. That's 10 parts of oxygen for a million parts of water. So there's many, many different adaptations by aquatic organisms to get oxygen out of the water. Fish have developed gills with blood circulating through fine filaments. And this Dobson fly has its own adaptations. Number one, in its environment, it's normally sitting in fast moving current. And so the current will flow over the organism's body and oxygen is picked up by its gills that you can see in between these abdominal filaments. The gills are like in little tufts, and it's those gills that absorb the oxygen from the water. Here in this little tub of water that I placed him in temporarily before I return him to the river, you can see that he's aiding the transfer of oxygen to his gills by flexing and pumping those tufts and moving them in the water. And you can see him rhythmically doing that here. So I always try to make it a point whenever I gather up an organism to film and talk about and investigate, I always return them exactly where I found them. So here we go back into the river. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door right here at the New River. And I'll turn my camera around a little bit so that the light is better. I love coming down here. It's a beautiful river. And the fact that there's Dobson flies larva here 
means that this water is clear. Dobson fly larvae, Helgramites are one of the indicators of really good water quality. And this water here, I'll have to say, really is quite beautiful. If you like what I do, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please leave me a comment. I love hearing comments from my viewers. I love interacting with my viewers. And I'll comment back and answer any questions that you send me. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. See you for the next episode.